Hello, everyone. Happy Friday Eve. Um, today, we're going to be talking about ecosystems. So we are finally starting on real content, yay, um, and going over just some basic introductory stuff about ecosystems. All right, so ecosystems are part of the levels of organization, um, kind of of the world. Um, <clears throat> so we first have our biosphere. Oops. All right, so we first have our, sorry about that, biosphere. Then we have our biomes, which we'll be talking about at the end of this unit, which are just like large areas of si sort of like the same climate factors. And then we have our ecosystems, which is all the living and non-living things in a set area. Um, within each ecosystem, you have communities, which are going to be all of the different species in one area, living things in one area. And then you have populations, which is one species. And then you have individual, which is one organism within a species. So we're going to be focusing on abiotic and biotic things in a set area. So remember, biotic means living, abiotic, non-living. All right, quick intro bio reminder. All right, next slide. So food webs, they show energy and nutrient transfer in an ecosystem. Um, hopefully you remember this from living. Arrows point in the direction of energy flow and nutrient transfer. So all of the energy and nutrients start here in the corn and it goes to the grasshopper. So the arrow points from the corn to the grasshopper. It shows the direction of energy and nutrients. All right, so it shows the flow. Good way to think of the arrows is showing the flow, where the energy is going to. Um, hopefully you also remember this from living that these are called primary producers. All right, so the plants along the bottom, those are the primary producers. They go through photosynthesis, make their own food. We're going to be talking about photosynthesis tomorrow. Um, the organisms that eat the primary producers, so this level right here, those are called the primary consumers. All right, and the organisms that eat the primaries, so this level here, are secondary. And finally, the organisms at the top of the food web are called tertiary. So anything that eats a secondary is called tertiary. You could also um, have some quaternary. <laughs> um, it can keep going. Um, so you can have tertiary, and so this would be an example of tertiary. These would be quater quaternary. The eagle and the python would be quaternary. But they would also be tertiary consumers, even though, so they're eating the secondary here, which makes them tertiary. But they're also eating this tertiary consumer here, which makes them quaternary. All right, so some organisms can fall into multiple categories. This looks awful. Let me clear that. Um, some organisms can fall into multiple categories. For example, if there's an organism that is an omnivore, like us, when you eat any plants, if you're eating a salad for lunch, you are a primary consumer. But if you're eating a nice big juicy hamburger, you are being a secondary consumer. So organisms can be both. It's not... <clears throat> exclusive. All right, resource partitioning. This is using resources in different ways at different times or in different places. So the idea is that if we resource partition, we are going to reduce competition, which means more species are going to be successful. Um, <clears throat> so this is an example of different places. So all of these birds here um, live in different parts of the tree. And since they all live in different parts of the tree, they don't compete with each other. So this would be different places. That's an example of um, resource partitioning for different places. This is a good one right here of how sometimes we resource partition. If you sneak into the fridge at night, you don't have to compete with your brothers or sisters, siblings, parents, anything like that, um, family members, anyone you share the fridge with, 
if you sneak in at night, different times, you're reducing your competition for the food in the fridge. All right. Symbiosis, I love symbiosis. I think it's so fascinating. So symbiosis is when two species live in very close physical contact with each other for very long periods of time. Um, and there are three main types of symbiosis. So there's mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. So for mutualism, the benefit is mutual. They both benefit from the relationship, both species. Parasitism, one species benefits and one is harmed. Commensalism, one benefits and one is unaffected. So a great, some great examples of um, <clears throat> symbiosis over here. So us, so this is our, this is the human stomach right here. This is the human stomach. Inside of our stomach, it's full of bacteria, viruses, and it's called our microbiome. And the bacteria that live in our gut actually help us digest a lot of food. For example, like cheese, anything that's dairy-based, we wouldn't be able to digest on our own. But because we have these bacteria helping us to digest it, we get more calories and the bacteria, um, they also get energy from it. So the bacteria that live inside of us don't hurt us, they actually help us. So it's a mutual um, benefit to both of us. So it's mutualism. So this one here, is mutualism. Parasitism, um, this example here, so this example here is an ant and growing out of the ant is a um, fungus <laughs> and so this fungus is really cool, um, really cool example of parasitism. The fungus actually takes over the ant's nervous system and it creates like a zombie ant. Super cool. And it tells the ant where to go and what to do. And eventually um, the fungus the spores like shoot out and it releases more spores and infects other ants. So it tells the ant to go somewhere to infect more ants to keep spreading. It's pretty crazy, zombie ants, all because of a fungus. Um, commensalism, this one I just think is funny. So this is our example of commensalism. So that is a sea cucumber. And um, the sea cucumber is the one who is unaffected in this relationship. So this big, gross blobby thing, that's a sea cu cucumber. The thing sticking out of the sea cucumber is a pearl fish. So the pearl fish actually lives inside of the butt of the sea cucumber um, and it gives it shelter and safety. Um, so the, the pearl fish benefits and the sea cucumber doesn't care, doesn't, is unaffected. Um, so that's a really funny example of commensalism in the wild. Science is crazy, kids. All right, so let's take a look at your interactive notebook. All right, so for today, I want you to draw a food web, pretty simple. Um, you can use the arrows here to connect the organisms that you see here. Um, if you're like doing it on an iPad and this is hard or something, feel free to just write the names of all of these organisms um, and use the arrows to connect them on a piece of paper. If you do the paper version, just take a picture and then add it into the Google slide. So if you do this on your phone, it's pretty easy. You can just take a picture and then you go to insert image. And then instead of um, uploading from your computer, if you're on your phone or tablet, there's an option to go right to your camera. Actually, it's right here too. Go to your camera and take a picture. So you can upload a picture if you wanna do this by hand. Also feel free to use the draw tools within PowerPoint to draw your lines. All right, so this other thing I want you to do with your food web is to label using um, boxes around each organism. So green is primary producers, blue is primary consumers, orange, secondary, red, tertiary. There's a couple ways you could do this. So if you're doing this by hand, um, feel free to use your own system if you don't have colored pencils, if you're actually drawing it out. But on here, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is click on a picture, click the border weight, add a border, and then click here and change the color. So let's say I was like, this is for sure a primary producer. Um, you can click green and there you go. It's, it's labeled as green. All right, so I'm, I'll take that off potentially. All right, so that's how you do that one. For this one, you're just um, saying how 
different disasters would affect the food web. So all you have to do is click and answer. If you run out of room, feel free to copy a slide and delete some questions. Um, <clears throat> and finally, I want you to do some research and find three different examples of, uh, not three different examples, but find an example of mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. Um, include some pictures. For parasitism, there are some really cool ones out there. So have some fun. I think parasites are fascinating. Um, so yeah, have some fun, add some pictures. And that is all you need to do for this evening. Um, I hope you have a great night and I will see group B and part of group, group C tomorrow to talk about dimensional analysis.